so I haven't worked with the bacterial leaf streak disease earlier. Uh, so all the information here, I think it was shared uh, by the co-authors here up on the screen. Uh, so, so this program, uh, it's led by uh, different researchers in, in the three prairie provinces. Uh, each of them, they're looking at the bacterial leaf streak populations, and they're still, it's, it's a new disease. Uh, it's, a not, it's not a new disease for us. It's been here for 100 years, but it's, it, the epidemic or the yield losses are occurring more and more uh, with, the year, with the years and years now. So that's why like, it's getting more and more popularity uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the recent years. Uh, the first report for uh, the, the, the first report uh, where th this disease had the highest impact, it came in 2012 from Alberta, southern Alberta. And after that, there, there have been like dozens of reports every year uh, from Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and, and, and the highest number of reports, they usually come from the southern Alberta where, where they had the irrigation setup. So that's why I felt like this would be a really important disease uh, to watch out for our irrigators as well. Uh, we, we irrigate, uh, our conditions are similar uh, what, they, what they have in Southern Alberta and it's be, be becoming an epidemic in, in that part of the country and with our irrigation and our climate and our weather, it could be a problem in the coming years. Uh, so for this disease I mentioned, uh, it's not a new disease. It's been here for a while, but now it's still causing a trouble for mo most of us. So that's why we have been talking or we have been reading a lot about this disease. Uh, so the whole strange for this disease is it can infect all the cereals, uh, wheat, barley, rye, triticale, they, all, they are all susceptible to bacterial leaf streak. Uh, it can also infect the weedy grasses or the annual grasses. So anything that grows around our field is susceptible uh, to this disease, uh, even though we don't have the crop, crop, uh, the cereal crop in the field. But if you have the grassy weeds or the annual weeds around around our plots, so it's surviving there. It's just waiting for the right time uh, to multiply and cause a cause an epidemic. It can, it can also survive on annual forages. Uh, so we we tend we tend to grow a lot of uh, animal forages under irrigation. Uh, so it, it can survive on those as well. Uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, like other diseases, it requires an abundant moisture. Uh, so it's not different. It requires abundant moisture, rainfall, dew, uh, high humidity. It all triggers the disease and health, health, in, health and replication or multiplication of this disease. Uh, Warm days and cool nights, uh, uh, they, as as same as fusarium, uh, if the temperature are, if the daytime temperature is warm, uh, night and uh, nighttime temperature is cool, that's usually trick uh, help in the germination of the spores uh, at the nighttime, and then trigger uh, spread the disease during the daytime, and that's that's the case for this as well. And again, rainfall and irrigation splashes that help to help this disease uh, to move around. And so that could be a problem uh, with the irrigation setups or all the uh, our irrigation uh, that can cause a problem for us in the coming days. So other things that we know we need to know about this disease is that this disease is seed transmitted. Uh, so like like fusarium had blight, uh, fusarium. It, it won't cause the heart blight symptoms, but fusidium, it, it's associated with a number of root rot diseases. But this one, it's, it's, it's there on the seed. If you, German, if you plant the same seed, it means that it, it, was, it was there and it can cause that leaf, uh, bacterial leaf uh, streak symptoms in the, in the season. Uh, it can overwinter on cereal crop residues. Uh, there, there's not much done in Canada on the overwintering part and how long this crop can survive. So I'm, I don't have much information on that. It can, over, it can also survive or overwinter on grassy weeds, uh, volunteer cereals. Uh, long distance transmission is to storms, uh, wind storms. Uh, they, they can carry this uh, disease from one field to another. Uh, it can be easily transmitted by insects and, and mechanical transmission, uh, uh, as in other diseases, it can be transmitted to one field, uh, one field to another field uh, by, um, by, by the 
machineries or tractors. Uh, so bacterial leaf streak, uh, uh, the first thing we have to make sure that we know about this disease is that it's not a fungus, it's a bacterium. Uh, the Fusarium hadbli, the one we discussed earlier, it was a fungal disease. Uh, this is a bacterium uh, caused by bacteria, so that's a big difference. Uh, uh, how you would plan for the management. The management for fungus is different. Uh, the management for, for bacterial disease would be different. Uh, it's caused by Xanthomonas transulans, uh, Pathovar andulosa. Uh, that's the pathovar which, uh, which can cause disease on both wheat and barley. There are seven or eight uh, pathovars uh, which can cause disease in Canada, which are confirmed they are in Canada. But each, each pathovar is associated with different cereal crops. But this one, it can cause uh, disease on both wheat and barley. Like we discussed for Fusarium had blight, uh, the fungus thing uh, we should know uh, when we plan for the control management strategy for any disease is we should know the, dry, uh, the life cycle of the disease. Life cycle of the disease. Uh, same thing for this one, as I mentioned, it can survive on the premium weeds and seed. Uh, that's how uh, it would overwinter or it would move around. Uh, it, uh, so this, uh, this one, like, like Fusarium, it can survive on the, survive in the crop debris and the Fusarium spore can live in the soil for long. But bacterium, uh, bacterial disease, they, they often tend to survive poorly in the soil. They can survive, but they, they can't survive as good as fungus. Uh, in the survive uh, in the soil, so that's why they survive poorly in the soil. The only only mode of survival survival would be the residue uh, of the crop seed. Uh, when there is uh, high humidity and the temperature is warm, from 15 to 30 degrees Celsius, uh, the disease would multiply. Uh, the bacterium uh, ooze uh, it will start spreading around uh, with the rain splash. Uh, with the rain splash, and then it move, uh, it will uh, move to the crop, neighboring crop, and that's how it would tend to complete a life cycle and stay on the seed and end it up on the debris and multiply again uh, in, in the next season. Uh, so as this is new disease, uh, it can be misdiagnosed, misdiagnosed with many of the other diseases uh, which are already here. Uh, so pathogens, they don't, uh, they don't decide which one would attack or which one uh, would cause a disease. So they can all come, they can all, um, uh, so they, they all can cause a disease or symptom at the same time. So the, this disease can be mixed diagnosed with other leaf spot diseases in wheat and barley. Uh, up in the first photo, uh, like the, the, that's how the disease would start uh, as a, as a uh, um, chlorotic lesion up on the leaf. Uh, so it, that these symptoms, uh, if you, if I have to guess, if I, I if I didn't had any history of DLS, I would I would guess that as a tan spot or a septoria a leaf spot. Uh, so this this could be misdiagnosed as, as any of any of the leaf spot diseases which are more prevalent. Uh, the second uh, photo uh, in here, you can see that over time uh, the pathogen or the bacteria. Uh, it would it would form a longitudinal uh, parallel lesions along with the veins, and if the weather is conducive, if there's enough moisture, you would actually see the bacterial ooze coming out of that lesions up in the three third photo I have. And over time, uh, the lesions uh, they would collapse, and and the leaf would look leaf would look like it had a burnt appearance, and. Uh, so up in the field, uh, uh, if you look at the first photo, that's how, the, so those the photos I showed earlier, those were from the lab or up in the greenhouse. So the conditions they can, or the symptoms can look different up in the field as there's not much humidity uh, up in the field as, as we get in the greenhouses or the labs. Uh, so up in the field, again, uh, it would start as a chlorotic lesion between the veins and over time, uh, these chlorotic lesion, they would infuse and again, uh, end up with a burnt, burnt appearance. Uh, up in the field, uh, if you have to look at uh, BLS symptoms, all the leaves uh, that would have a bacterial leaf streak symptom, uh, the leaves, they would appear glazed, uh, like, like a glazed donut. Uh, they would have a shiny appearance. So that's, that's how you would pick a, a bacterial leaf streak disease uh, from other leaf, uh, leaf spot diseases. 
Uh, this fungus, uh, it can also cause disease up on the glooms. Uh, up on the glooms, you would see a purple, purplish black uh, uh, streaks up on the glooms. Uh, so these are the symptoms, how they would appear on the glooms. And if, if, if they appear on the glooms, uh, that, uh, it's termed as black shaft. Uh, so these symptoms can be easily misdiagnosed as septu uh, septoria gloom blotch. Uh, I don't have the photo uh, for the uh, septoria leaf blot, but these can be misdiagnosed. Or uh, like the symptoms are very close to septoria gloom blot. The only difference would be septoria gloom blot is caused by fungus, and this one is caused by bacteria. Uh, the fungus they usually have a fruiting body associated with the symptoms. Uh, if you look up, look with a magnifying glass, you would see this uh, uh, fruiting uh, bodies uh, associated with the septoria leaf blot. But with this one, you won't see any of that. So that's the distinct, uh, distinctive character uh, for black shell. And up in the field uh, under irrigation, uh, you would see a discolored patch. If you see that in the field, go close by and have a look. I have seen the symptoms up around Outlook, and I know it's here. Uh, I saw it last, last year also. So if you see that, so do make sure, uh, get a diagnostic help, uh, contact Ali Alureza, he's our provincial pathologist in the room. If you need help from any of the provincial expert or people working at the university, to get their help, send their samples, and get it checked before you make any decision. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, this, this disease has been getting, creating a problem in Alberta and started in 2012 from a single field. And as you can see, uh, the number of field uh, diagnostic or problems, uh, it has been uh, going up since then. And the main, main, most of the sample that, that, uh, that they included in this survey, they came from Southern Alberta where they had the irrigation setup. So they had ample moisture, they had warm, and warm, uh, warm conditions in the summer, cool night, a lot of dew formation overnight, and that's, that was, that's what the, was triggering, triggering the disease uh, in the last two or three years. Uh, so this is a new disease. Uh, there's not much management recommendations or options available. Uh, the first thing we have to learn is, like, it's a bacteria, not a fungus. So the fungicides, uh, which we normally use for control of disease, it won't work in this case, because fungus, they have a different metabolism as compared to bacteria. So the, all the fungicides, they won't, do, they won't work on, on, on BLS. Uh, host resistance is a new disease. Uh, it, it, uh, scientists in US, they have been working on this for like five or seven, seven years. And we are way, way back, our, our, most of the project that started in in Saskatchewan or Western Canada, this they started two years back. So we haven't done much much uh, progress in terms of host resistance, and there's not much available for, for mo mo not much available uh, if, if we talk about the host resistance for disease control. Bactericides, uh, there's not uh, one available for the control of the disease, as it's a bacteria. The, uh, the bacteria can multiply uh, in 24 hours, so. Uh, for the fungicide, uh, if it's a fungus uh, like Fusarium had blight, it would multiply one, uh, once in a season. It's a monocyclic disease. These are polycyclic. You, could, you would have multiple cycles in, in, in a season. It can like double in 24 hours. And imagine how many fungicides you would have end up, or uh, bactericides you would, you would end up spraying on this one. Uh, seed treatment, uh, bactericides, again, uh, there's not many options available, everything is limited, uh, so there's nothing available up in the market, uh, but they, there might be something coming. Uh, crop rotation, uh, it can be helpful in this case, uh, and as I mentioned, it can, it can survive, it survives on the seed, so crop rotation uh, won't be helpful in that case, but we have a number of diseases, uh, which uh, other diseases when, which infect our crops. So crop rotation is always the best management practice for managing any disease. So crop rotation would be a, a good practice to follow, but it, it, won't, uh, it won't control this disease. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this disease is new to all of us, uh, so it could be misdiagnosed with many other diseases. 
Uh, so get help. Uh, do your do your work when it comes comes uh, comes to these disease identifications or what symptoms you you should be looking at. Uh, C testing, uh, C C testing. Uh, if you if you like, I know most of the farmers uh, they tend to keep their seed uh, for the next season, uh, save their farm seed. So that's not good, not a good option uh, when it comes to this. To get your seed tested, uh, if it's a clean seed, I would advise a to use. To use. If it tests positive for BLS, uh, it's not a good practice to follow. Uh, irrigation management, I have you can, irrigation management here. Uh, there isn't much we can do with the irrigation management for crop diseases. Uh, uh, the only thing we can do is uh, keep a good track of the disease. If you know a field where the disease was, uh, don't try to irrigate that spot as it, it can it can move around with the, with the irrigation splash or rain splash, that's the only best management practices we can follow uh, when we talk about irrigation. Uh, and again, uh, this is new to every one of us. Uh, we need to talk more about this. Uh, it can cause a lot of problem. Uh, bacterial leaf light, is a, it, it's another disease uh, on which, cause, which, which, can co uh, which can occur on both wheat and barley. It's caused, caused by pseudomonas, but this one is a different pathogen. Uh, the, the yield loss is estimated, uh, associated with bacterial blight, they are 10 to 20%. With this one, it, it can be as high as 50 to 60%. So, so, this, one is, so this one is more, uh, it, can co co uh, it can cause more disease losses. So we should talk about this, uh, make people aware that they, it, it's happening somewhere. Uh, even if it's not happening on our field, we should, be, we should keep an eye for this and make make everyone aware of this. And even though uh, most of the diseases we already have, uh, we know how the symptoms look like, they can be mixed diagnosed. Uh, up on the screen I have two uh, heads, uh, both, they show up bleaching symptoms. Uh, the one on, the, on my right, your left, uh, it, it's, it's a hail damage, not a fusarium head blight. The symptoms look very familiar to, uh, to fusarium head blight. So even, even though this disease has been around for 20 years, we can easily misdiagnose. So something like bacterial leaf streak, uh, that's very new to us. So we should do our homework uh, on the disease identifications. And so that if it's, if, if it's there, we should have good notes, keep record where what's happening, how much loss, uh, how much yield losses we have. Uh, and also we should avoid uh, using that seed lot uh, for, for the seeding purposes. Uh, and with that, I would end my presentation. Uh, ICDC, we do a number of projects. Uh, diseases are just one uh, aspect of our research program. Uh, we have uh, different projects on different, uh, different areas. And we have done a lot of projects in the last 10, 10 years. I'm making a list of all the projects uh, we did and what information is available with us. If you have any question, give us a call. We might have already done something on that and we can help you with that. But if not, if we haven't done anything, it will give me an idea uh, to apply for future funding. So do you reach out if you need any help or if you have any idea. Uh, with that, I will add my presentation. If you are having any questions regarding this, uh, I would be happy to, help. Happy to answer now.